Hello, David here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to install Hasio on your Unraid server in a VM. Let's get started. So the very first thing to do is to create a snapshot of our current Hasio installation. And I've got that here, I made it 46 minutes ago. So I'm going to download it. So here I am in my Unraid server. The first thing I want to check is to see if I have HVM enabled. And I do have it enabled. If it is disabled, enable it or else you will not be able to continue on with this tutorial. It could be enabled in your BIOS settings and it's usually called one of these things. If you do not see this in your BIOS, it could mean that your processor does not support virtualization. The next thing we need is a VMDK file for HasOS. If you don't already have it, create a share in Unraid called Domains. I'm going to move this VMDK file that I just downloaded into the Domains share in Unraid. I'm going to create a new folder called HasOS. For those of you that don't know, HasIO runs on HasOS. After copying the file, be sure to extract it. Once it's been extracted, we can delete the original file and keep the VMDK file. Before I go on, I'd like to point something out. Unraid already has a Home Assistant container. However, this Home Assistant is not the same as HasIO. This is the original version of Home Assistant, and what we're installing is HasIO. So essentially, we're going to create a VM and have it boot from this image that we downloaded here. Before we can proceed, there's one thing we have to do. We have to convert this VMDK file into a QCal2 file. This is because the VMDK file does not dynamically grow, whereas the QCal2 file will. The easiest way to convert this VMDK file to a QCal2 file is with the built-in terminal in Unraid. So let's do that. I will link the command that I will be using in the comments below. All you have to do is change it to match the file that you have. So once it's completed, let's go take a look. And sure enough, now I have a VMDK file and a QCal2 file. The next command we will use will resize the QCal2 file to about 20 gigabytes. image resized. So now we are ready to create our VM. So let's go to VMs, add VM, and we're going to create a basic Linux VM. I'm going to assign two cores and about two gigabytes of RAM. You can assign more if you think it's needed for you. We're going to leave all this as it is. Now for the primary disk location, this is what we're going to assign to our QCal2 file manual and let's find that file that we just created the primary v disk bus we're going to change to sata and everything else can be left alone let's create the vm and see if it boots up so once you're at this point where you see something that says link becomes ready and everything stops moving, let's go see if we have a new device on our network called HasIO. And sure enough, we have a new device called HasIO with an IP that I don't recognize. So let's visit this IP at port 8123. And look at that. That was quick. It took less than five minutes for the whole process to go through as a VM will run much faster than a Raspberry Pi. Let's create a user account and log in. And just like that, we have HasIO installed and running on our new VM, but we're not done yet. Remember that snapshot that we created in the beginning of the tutorial? We are now going to use that snapshot and restore our image back onto this new VM that we just created. 
since this is a fresh installation, we don't have any add-ons installed. So I'm first going to install Samba add-on so that I can get access to the files and copy over that snapshot file onto this new installation. Since I already know the IP address of this new installation, I'm going to use that IP address to connect to it. Use the credentials that you created in the Samba add-on. Now go to your downloads folder, copy that file into the backup folder. Then go back to Hass.io, Snapshots. If you don't see any snapshots, click this reload button up here. And there we go, the snapshot that we created an hour ago. So now, let's restore the snapshot that we had created from our Raspberry Pi. And about 10 to 15 minutes later, I reloaded the page and nothing happened. And then I realized that the initial installation didn't have HTTPS enabled and the backed up version had. So I put in HTTPS, put in my IP address. Now when I log in, I'm not going to use the username and password that I created earlier. What I'm going to use is the original username and password of my original installation that was running on the Raspberry Pi. And there we go. We now have duplicate versions of Hass.io running on two different machines. So now we could technically go and unplug our Raspberry Pi and use it for another future project. If you were using MQTT on your previous installation, then make sure to change the IP address of this installation to match the old one. I hope that you liked this video, and if you liked it, please give it a like. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel for more projects like these. And as always, I hope you all have a great day.